Another week uh, in the legislature is done. We are inching closer to drop dead day, as the state house savants call it. And speaking of state house savants, our insiders are here. We have conservative commentator Abdul Hakim Shabazz from IndyPolitics.com. Democrat Brian Gaddy is here, and another guest this week, Adam Wren. Uh, speaking of political newsletters, as uh, Abdul has his cheat sheet, Adam Wren has Importantville, which uh, I highly recommend. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to have all of you here. Good to be here. Good morning. And uh, let's start off talking about, yeah, good to have you, Adam. And uh, the reason I wanted to bring in Adam, and we'll, we'll delve into this later, some campaign announcements. So uh, we're already talking about the 2022 election. It's kind of an off year, but there is uh, one big race in particular here in Marion County that I uh, want to delve into before we are done. But let's start at the State House. Uh, this week, uh, the House passed its big tax cut package for businesses and individuals. And yet it, it already seems dead on arrival in the Senate based on the talk that we're hearing. We'll start with you, Abdul. Uh, is this as dead as it seems? Because even the most conservative Senate Republicans uh, sound like they don't want to talk about taxes right now. Uh, well, uh, Indian lawmakers, at least on the Senate side, are very hesitant to open up to do anything sort of majorly budgetary in a non-budget year, uh, in a nutshell. I know uh, Senator Mishler, uh, uh, also, uh, uh, Speaker uh, Pro Tem Rob Brand, and some other folks have basically said, hey, it's not that they're opposed to tax cuts, they would just rather do them uh, in the context and the framework of a, of a budget year, uh, which is why that's why they, that's why there seems to be some sort of hesitancy to go as far as the House did uh, on their on their whole issue of tax cuts. Now, the Senate uh, this week did pass sort of the expense of the automatic taxpayer's refund, uh, which is like $125 per Hoosier household or per taxpayer, uh, which I think is good. But at the end of the day, though, uh, it's going to be it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, like I said, going forward uh, when senators don't want to necessarily open up that budget discussion. Ryan Gaddy, should we be cutting taxes right now? Well, I think we should for working families, but uh, not for people, not for people that are make that are multimillionaires or people that are, I think, in my opinion, are making over three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. What we should be doing is investing our, our state dollars into infrastructure and improving our education. That is what we need to be doing. Indiana is competing with not just our sister states in the Midwest, but states all over the country for high tech jobs. Um, we should be investing that money in education and infrastructure. So that's what I personally believe. Adam, Democrats, or at least the state Democratic Party, has tried to talk a lot about how Republicans are taking money that came to the state via the American Rescue Plan, of course, uh, pushed forward by President Biden, congressional Democrats against uh, near unanimous Republican opposition in Washington, and how uh, Republicans are taking that money, not taking the money and running, essentially, but taking that money and saying, hey, we've got all this money, let's give everybody a tax cut, and, and not giving Democrats credit for it. Uh, the, the Democratic Party has said a lot about that lately. Do you think, uh, in your reporting, does that really make an impact here in Indiana in a red state uh, like we are? You know, I'm not I'm not certain that it does. I mean, the Democrats are, are doing their best to hold Republicans here accountable, uh, Republicans, particularly in the congressional de delegation who voted against this money um, and, and who are who are now, um, you know, in some cases, taking credit for it um, to to to. To account, they're trying to hold them account for that. But I think that uh, on the whole, Republicans' positions are that look, the, the feds um, sent us this money. It is now our duty to be good stewards of it and to spend it as best as we can. And so, for the average person, um, you know, watching this debate play out, I'm not sure that they really distinguish, you know, the, those nuances like that. So I, I'm not sure in the final analysis that it really makes a difference. Let's look forward instead of looking back uh, for this next topic, and that is House Bill 1041, which is going before the House Education Committee next week. And it would essentially be a ban on trans athletes, uh, specifically looking at people who were born male who are transitioning or have transitioned to female, but barring them from competing in women's sports at the high school and lower school level. Uh, we've heard of sporadic cases, Brian, where this is happening around the country. It's causing some controversy. I know the NCAA, which is headquartered in Indianapolis, they are trying to deal with it at the college level by saying that each individual sport is going to set their own rules here. But in Indiana, uh, I, I personally have not heard of too many trans women who are competing in male sports. Uh, but uh, again, this uh, apparently is a burning issue that uh, needs to be dealt with, according to some in the legislature this year. 
So again, once again, this is just the, uh, the culture warriors in the Republican Party trying to separate and divide Hoosiers. Um, trans athletes, they have a right to compete in sports and we don't need politicians interfering with their ability to compete in sports. It just really is just a tragic thing that we've got so many people in the General Assembly, these right-wing Republicans that are out here just trying to divide Hoosiers. And we've got so many issues that we need to be dealing with, like, like we mentioned earlier, um, education, um, infrastructure. These are the issues that we should be focusing on and we shouldn't be focusing on dividing Hoosiers. Abdul, is this uh, simply doing what the Republican base wants to in an election year? Is this, that the reason that this is coming forward right now? Well, I think, uh, I think part of the reason why it's coming forward is because Indiana has $5 billion in the bank. And so when you, got, you don't have money problems, all, the, all these cultural issues that have been sitting out there for a while tend to, tend to bubble up. Um, I take a little bit of a different position on the whole issue of trans athletes, because while there are, there are, while there are only two sexes, male and female, unless you're an earthworm, gender is kind of a fluid situation. However, with that said, do you need a law to prevent you know, a uh, trans athlete from participating. I'm, necessarily, I'm not necessarily sure that's the way to go. I'd rather schools and school districts like the NCAA kind of make up sort of their own, their own rules. But there is something to be said about a, you know, a trans athlete you know, competing, you know, because men have more upper body strength than women. That's just a fact of life. And is it really fair to a female swimmer for she had to compete against a male swimmer? I mean, I mean there, there's, there's, there's a legitimate question there. I don't necessarily think there needs to be a law to address that, but the, but the issue should be addressed. Adam, this is an issue that we've seen bubble up a, a number of places around the country. And of course, we are in uh, off-year elections, but still a pretty significant number of races to come this year. Is, is an issue like this really going to matter in the grand scheme of things come uh, November? Or is this more of a, a primary season type issue? Yeah, I think it might be uh, more of a primary uh, type issue. Um, you can see you know, primaries against uh, lawmakers who potentially you know, oppose this bill. Uh, for me, you know, as a reporter, this gives me strong uh, RIFRA vibes uh, from back in 2015, the Religious Freedom and Restoration Act. Um, you know, you could see sort of a corporate backlash to Indiana um, if this bill uh, passes, I think, um, in, in the General Assembly. Um, I don't think it will ultimately uh, pass. Um, I think that, um, you know, for the most part, uh, Republicans, particularly, you know, in the, in the Senate and, and leadership in the House, uh, will view this as something that uh, could potentially, you know, put their uh, caucus um, at risk of, of division. And so I think ultimately uh, this will end up probably in the Rules Committee. Speaking of campaigns, our political insiders are with us. Adam Wren from the political newsletter Importantville. You also see his writings in various other places. Abdul Hakim Shabazz, IndiePolitics.com, Brian Gaddy, Democratic commentator. Uh, the campaign that uh, a lot of people are now going to be paying attention to in Marion County is the race for Marion County prosecutor. We found out this week that uh, Republicans are going to put forth Cindy Carrasco, a former official lawyer in both the Pence and the uh, Eric Holcomb administrations at the State House. And Adam, you spoke to uh, Cindy this week uh, just ahead of her announcement. And of course, we found out that Ryan Mears, the Democratic prosecutor, had filed for re-election or officially filed one day after uh, the Cindy Carrasco news uh, became public. But you talked to Cindy, and it seems like uh, the Republican Party locally, even though she still has to go through a primary, Republicans seem to be very high on her. Yeah, I don't think that she's going to have a challenger before uh, slating on February 1st, uh, February 5th in the Republican Party. Uh, but this is someone who comes from the Holcomb administration, also worked under Mitch Daniels. Um, and so, uh, it, you know, there, there's talk that she could be a, a pretty significant uh, fundraiser. Uh, Ryan Mears for his fundraising is sort of where at, uh, the late Terry Curry was at this point uh, in the last cycle uh, in terms of fundraising with about uh, a little bit more than $200,000 cash on hand. Um, you know, this is a candidate who could raise, you know, that much in a matter uh, of weeks. And so uh, I think this race is important to watch for a number of reasons. One, it's a precursor to the 2023 mayoral race, and it's sort of a test of the, the local Democratic Party here, but it's also a test of a new Marion County GOP under new chairman, Joe Elsner, who comes from the Holcomb wing of the party. And, you know, for, for, for this race specifically, uh, you know, this is a test of whether Republicans can sort of gain back uh, control in Marion County. Uh, Democrats have defeated UNIGOV, the old system of government established by uh, the, the late, um, uh, 
uh, Richard Luger. And I think that this is a really important race to watch. Also, you've got a record number of homicides this year. So a lot of people will be focused on public safety. Abdul Conventional Wisdom says it's Marion County, big time Democratic County, and that any Republican is not going to have a tremendous chance of knocking off a, an incumbent prosecutor, even though this is Ryan Mears' first election. Why might that not be true in 2022? Um, I think I have a couple of dynamics uh, going on here. Number one, you're right. Marin County is a uh, Democratic county, very blue. However, we have a couple of things in place. Uh, number one, Mrs. Mears' sort of first uh, run uh, for public office. Uh, we did some polling back in Indy politics back in August uh, and found out his numbers were like 25, 26, 47. Not a lot of people necessarily knew who Ryan Mears uh, was. Now, obviously, that'll change as the campaign gets a little bit closer. Uh, but also uh, with Cindy, you got to keep, keep in mind, uh, you know, she's from that Eric Holcomb wing uh, of the Republican Party. So she's not a far right, you know, lock him up and throw away the key uh, conservative. I've known Cindy for years. She's very thoughtful, uh, very considerate. And also Ryan Mears is a good friend, too. So it'll be an interesting race to see what happens. I think where Republicans have a little bit more of an advantage than maybe in previous years is our crime problem, like Adam had mentioned. I mean, we've had like six, seven years of record murders and record homicides here in, in here in Indianapolis. And also, too, crime is also impacting places that normally normally don't see a lot of crime, so to speak. That's a very polite way of saying it. it's not just a black urban neighborhood problem anymore. I mean, there are folks like, you know, 71st in the Shalin area, uh, folks up in Pike Township who are really concerned about the crime issue. And unless we get that under control, I think it's I think it's so I think it's basically a fair game. I think the winds favor. Ryan Mears, but Cindy has an opening. Brian, from Democrats' perspective, is Ryan Mears vulnerable this year? Absolutely not. The, the Marion County Democratic Party, uh, we're solid, we're strong. Uh, the Marion County Republican Party, uh, compared to us, is very weak. Um, this is our county. It will remain our county, and we will get uh, Ryan Mears across the finish line. So I'm not saying that he won't face a tough race, but in the end, he will win, no doubt. Very quickly, I want to touch on one more campaign-related thing or item, and that would be what Senator Mike Braun was doing in Indianapolis this week. He made a visit to the State House. Uh, Adam, what? What? And I, I guess conventional wisdom has us thinking that maybe he's interested in running for something else in a few years. Uh, is that what he was feeling out during his uh, visit to the State House? I, I, I think that might have been part of it, but you know, Senator Young was also at the state house that day. didn't didn't hold a media availability. met with a, met with the governor. I mean, our the congressional delegation typically, you know, comes to the legislature, uh, you know, once a year and kind of connects connects with uh, uh, their the state and local leaders. But I think you know, Braun is seriously looking at 2024. He said he was going to decide after the midterms this year. Uh, but I, I think um, you know he's been spending a lot of time back home. His chief of staff uh, spends a lot of time in, in Bloomington uh, traveling the state, and he's visited all 92 counties a couple of years in a row. So I really think he's been in kind of the gubernatorial uh, race mode uh, for a significant amount of time now. And I'd actually be surprised if he stayed in the Senate. Doesn't seem uh, to like it there that much. Spends a lot of time talking about how not a ton can get done. Um, and so I, I would actually be surprised if he didn't run at this point. Abdul, is that what you're hearing? Do you think Mike Braun wants to be governor? Um, I think he's looking at his options. I think governor is a very attractive uh, proposition for Mike Braun. Because uh, you understand Mike Braun is an executive. Uh, so he tends to, tends to lean more toward that executive branch of government as opposed to the legislative branch. And with the dysfunction in Washington, D.C., which is a town that basically traded malaria for politics, I can see why he would not want to be bothered uh, with life in the Senate. Like I said, I was at the news conference and he basically said, hey, you know, six, eight months, I'll probably make a decision after the midterm elections. I think if, this, if Republicans take the Senate back, he may change his mind. But I would, but I would not be surprised to see uh, Mike Braun, you know, on the primary ballot for governor in 2024, at least today. Brian, we see all these uh, big names lining up on the Republican side potentially. We've heard Braun, we've heard uh, Todd Rokita, the state attorney general, Congressman Trey Hollingsworth, who is leaving Congress at the end of this term. A lot of big names who seem to want to be uh, governor on the Republican side. We haven't heard much from the Democratic side. Uh, I mean, there's been speculation perhaps about Pete Buttigieg coming back from being Secretary of Transportation. I think that would be uh, high on the wish list of some Democrats. But uh, what are Democrats thinking about 2024? Well, it's still early on our side of the fence. Um, yes, there are a lot of big names on the Republican side that are lining up. But I do think in the end, we will uh, field a candidate, a very strong candidate that will be very competitive statewide. 
but I would say on our side, Vince is still still kind of early. Our political insiders are Abdul Hakim Shabazz, Brian Gaddy, Adam Wren joining us today. Uh, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we will do it again very soon. Thank you.